Okay, so we're going to look at the mono rig. It's the rig I've been using this spring for all of my tench fishing. Um, done really well on it as well, and it's the cheapest chips. So, um, yeah, we'll start off. You're going to need some mono. Now, it can be any mono. Um, I've gone for the Synchro Loaded. Um, I like it because it's a bit heavier. Um, again, I look for about a 15 pound line for this. Um, there are carp in the lake that I'm fishing. They go up to sort of mid 30s, so again, gives me a little bit of confidence. You could step it up to a 20 pound line if you wanted to, um, but for me, it's not really snaggy, so a 15 pound line is fine. I'm gonna need something to pull those hooks tight and those knots tight later on. Gonna need some cutters. We'll need a lighter for blobbing down. Some old rig tubing. Baiting needle an anti-tangle sleeve, some putty, kickers, and they can be any colour you want. I've got a trans khaki here, one and a yellow. I also use red or pink and try and match those to the baits that I'm using. You're going to need either a micro swivel or a rig ring. Again, I've got ovals, they can be round. And obviously, hook of your choice. All I'd say with that is it needs to have a straight or a slightly in-turned eye, um, not an out-turned eye for this rig. All right, let's get building. Okay, first thing you want to do is get your mono. And you want to take probably, I don't know, a good 12, 14 inches uh, of mono off on this one. Um, like I said, it's fairly cheap. Yeah, it's better to start with more than you need uh, and trim it down. So take that. Next you want to do is you want to get our hook of choice. So again, here, I'm tench fishing mainly, so I've gone for a size sort of eight, that one is. Um, you can step it up to a, a four, um, you know, potentially even a two if you're going to go abroad. Um, but again, if you're going to be fishing for bigger fish, I'll be stepping that mono up to a, to a 20 pound. Um, but yeah, essentially what we want to do is begin going through this side of the eye of the hook. So in through here, and we want to be going in, pull about... And a good two inches or so through. Once you've done that, you then want to take your old rig tube in. So I tend to not throw this sort of stuff away simply because it does come in handy. Um, and again, it's just a component you haven't got to buy. So you want to just snip off just a small piece of rig tubing. It doesn't need to be big at all. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take this hook, a couple of inches that have gone through, and you're just going to put that line, if you can, just through that rig tube in, like so, pull that down. Next thing you want to do is you want to take the point of the hook and slowly work that through the middle of that rig tube in, and you want to work that onto the hook as you go. Okay, just be a bit careful here that you don't get that point of the hook in your finger. Right. Now, I like to have that sat just on the edge of the, the bend of the hook there. Give it a bit of a twist to make sure that that line's all X'd in. You've not got it twisted round your, your hook shank, so it should all be nice and aligned. Next thing you're going to want to do is take your micro swivel, or in my case, rig ring. You want to pop that on like so. Okay. So next stage, you're then going to take this end and you're going to put it back through the eye of that hook from the top going at the bottom and then begin to pull that down. Now what you're creating here is a D. So I don't know whether you can see that, but you're creating a nice D at the top. Don't worry too much about pulling it too tight or anything right now. You then want to grab the end and take the longer piece that you've got. So this is actually going to be your, your rig. And then you want to do a knotless knot all the way around. So you go around the top once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times. And then we're going to pass this long section back through the eye of that hook. Just like so. Pull it down. 
All right. And essentially, you've got your D here now with your rig ring for your bait. And this has come through. Now, what I then like to do is just trim this excess down. You want to be really careful here because you do not want to burn that main line of your, your rig. But we're just going to blob this down a little bit. Get the lighter to work. Need some more gas. There you go. Okay. And then we're going to take our kicker. So I'm going to go for a trans khaki kicker this time. Keep it all natural. Thread that on. Like so. And then obviously that blob down piece goes through as well. And then we just slowly work that onto the knot of that hook. It sits there looking like that. It just gives it a little bit more aggression to that hook point there. So we're looking to keep that curve in, um, but not close it up too much. Next we're going to take our anti-tangle sleeve. Now I always put my anti-tangle sleeve on now for tying any loops or booms of, at the end. Just want to thread that through if we can. It's actually sealed this one. I'll explain why I can't get the line through. So here we go. Easier when there's a hole. And we just let that drop. Okay. Next stage is we're going to make a loop. And this will connect onto your quick release swivel that you've got, which will go onto your main line. Now, this is when you determine how long your rig's going to be. So I like a rig to be around about six inches long. We make a loop. We then make another loop. So since you've got those so a loop at the bottom here and a loop there. Now what I like to do, because I'm a bit fingers and thumbs, take a baiting needle, go in through the back, then go over, and then grab this loop here and pull it back through. And that there will then create a really nice, neat figure of eight knot. So we don't want to pull this dead tight right now. We'll do that when we do the uh, actual pullers. So next stage, let's just moisten those knots up. Take your hook puller or rig puller. Always have a handy pair of uh, forceps with the other end. And what we want to do is just tease this down now and make sure those knots are nice and tight. There we go. Trim off this tag end. And then ease that anti-dangle sleeve down. Like so. And then you'll see a nice loop at the end to, to hook on. Break down the other end. And I also, at this point, just like to add a little tiny bit of putty just to make sure that that rig is laying flat when it's out on the uh, lake bed. It um, doesn't need masses of putty. Just warm it up in your fingers just slightly. It goes on and sticks far better. Although, to be fair, this putty is really good anyway. Just stick it on. Wrap it round and then work it on with your fingers. A decent little blob there. And then you've got the finished rig. Really easy to make, quick, um, doesn't take too much time at all. And again, it's cheap as chips. So all we'll be left now is to tie on our chosen bait now with some bait floss uh, and then that, get that on for, for fishing. Okay.